Hey, hey, everybody. Happy New Year and welcome to ClayShare Live. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips. Each week we bring you a live tutorial here from ClayShare. And this week we're going to have some fun with texture. I have over the last few years collected a large quantity of placemats. Some I have purchased myself. Some have been sent to me by my amazing ClayShare members. And I have them in just about every kind of seasonal pattern you can imagine. And I've got some finished pieces and we're just gonna talk about texture and you know ways we can use them. Now you know me, you know I love texture and you know I design my own line of rolling pins and we sell those through ClayShare Market and I think rolling pins are a fabulous way to add texture to your work, but it's definitely not the only way. There are so many other options out there. Placemats, these vinyl placemats are one that I think are great. They're inexpensive. They're readily available pretty much everywhere and um, they come in all kinds of materials. You can get them in vinyl, you can get them in felt. I love some felt ones. The felt, the felt are nice. They leave a nice deep impression. And like I mentioned earlier, there's so many different designs depending on the season. And this is one I recently got from Singapore. One of our members, Sandia, sent this to me. And I guess you could probably get it here in the US as well. I guess you don't have to go to Singapore to get one of these, but I got one and I'm super excited and I used it to make a plate. And I've got some others that I'm, I'm gonna share as well. And I got some glaze pieces too. Now other things you can do for textures, of course you can do stamping, you can make your own stamps, you can buy stamps, you can make texture balls and texture rollers and I have classes on that. You can make texture plates, you can do so many things. It's really the sky's the limit as far as what you can do with texture. But we're just gonna do the placemats because sometimes you just wanna ease on in. So hope everybody's doing well. Hi, I'm from Michigan. If you're excited to make the live, I'm glad you made the live as well. We're super psyched. So we have a new class on ClayShare, it came out over the holiday break. It's the divided dish, which can be used as a baking dish or a serving dish. So I got that class up. I'm working on next week's class, which is another bakeware piece. It's a secret, I can't, I can't let it out of the bag. I gotta keep it under wraps. And later tonight in prime time, that's our private broadcast for premium members, we're gonna be talking about what laser printer you need to make your own laser decals. So the work behind me you see was all made using laser decals that I printed out myself, and you can do the same. And I'm gonna talk with my members about what printers work, what printers don't. We'll talk about paper and the process and I already have a full length class on that up on ClayShare, but this is more of a information and um, education session for everybody. So that's gonna be a blast as well. Okie dokie. So you wanna see what I made a little earlier? I wanna show this to you guys. Um, this was from this placemat and the clay that, I'll put this up here. So here's the placemat. Isn't that great? The clay I used is Laguna 60 and that's a brown speckled clay. I really love it. It's, um, do I have one with it over here? That's Tucker's Mid Smooth Stone Spec. I don't know if I have any right here. Oh wait, here's one. Um, here's a piece with the brown clay. There it is fired and there it is glazed. So this is a great clay that I'm using right now because it can be used for functional pottery. You can make mugs, plates, bowls. You can do sculpture with it. You can also do bakeware with it. Not all clays are great for bakeware. This is one that is though. And so let me give a close up over here so you can see. See how beautiful that texture is? It's divine. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, so this was a simple plate I made uh, right earlier today. Really easy to do. You made it on time. And you have this placemat too and you love it. It's, it's a great one. So where can you get placemats? That's a question that I get a lot. Um, hobby stores, craft stores, home goods stores, TJ Maxx will often have them, home goods themselves, that is a store. Sometimes you can find them at big, big box stores, uh, Walmarts and things like that sometimes have them, especially seasonally. Uh, online you can find them, people will sell them on eBay, people will sell them on Etsy, they sell them on Amazon, um, a lot of other home supply stores that so sell decorative wares will sell placemats. And I just look up placemats, and this is what you get. Now, on Amazon, a lot of times they sell them in packs of 10. You might not need 10, but 
but you might know 10 people that make pottery. Or if you work in a community studio, maybe you buy 10 and of one design, they buy 10 of one design and you all share with each other. This one here, I got at a local hobby store uh, after Valentine's Day. I like to buy them out of season, after the season has ended and they mark them down 75%. So you get them for like 50 cents or something. They become very affordable. So here's two that I got a couple years ago after the holiday ended that are hearts. Kind of appropriate now if you go to the hobby stores, you'll find these. They are full price. Now maybe some people have them on sale before the holiday's over. Maybe they just don't want to have to ex have extra stock. But um, Hobby Lobby is a craft store we have here. Michael's, Joanne Fabrics, those are stores that we have in, in our region that carries these. There used to be a Ben Franklin when I lived in the South. I don't know if they still even exist anymore as a hobby store. Um, they used to have good supplies there. This one was sent to me, um, actually hand delivered from Texas from one of our members, Tracy brought this to me. And she actually brought me another one that inspired me to do a new rolling pin design. But this is a beautiful cherry blossom uh, placemat that I really like a lot. This one, let me show you. This is a table runner, so it doesn't have to be a placemat. You could get a felt table runner. This was a fall one I got on sale after fall. Kind of how it works. <laughs> and let me show you, I've got two pieces I made with this, so you can see the texture. We'll go over to the um, small camera. So. This is that beautiful felt mat. Look at the texture in here. So I've got two finished pieces with this texture. The, this one here is my rose, this is rose gold from Georgie's. That's the, this one. And then this one here, the other one is my black copper. And you can buy that from Clayscape. So that's my black copper, the brown one. But it's this, look how deep that texture is. It, it, it's amazing. And that's just from that felt placemat. There's the back of them so you can see. These were ones left over from my fall open studio weekend sales so people came and bought a bunch of pumpkin plates but not these two. I don't know why. They're awesome. So I kept them. They're mine. <laughs> That's what happens, right? Then I end up with demo pieces for you guys. Um, so let's see. People are sharing links. We have Tablecloth Cloths Factory has lots of place mats. Um, so to make my rounded rectangle plate, I used a mold I made myself in the studio. So this is my wok bowl mold. This is a class on Clayshare. I made this mold um, to make pottery on, and it's what I used to make this beautiful rounded square plate, this plate right here. And you can make them bigger or smaller, but I have a class on teaching you how to make not just this mold, but we make fruit bowls on it. We make a squared plate. So this gets used a lot in my studio. I love this gentle slope on this plate. It reminds me of the RD2 forms that Jeff from GR Pottery Forms has come out with, but he only has two sizes. So hopefully, they'll, I think they'll be more soon. I hope so. But you can make your own mold. This is not plaster. So a lot of people, when they hear mold, they are like, wait, no, no, I can't make a mold because I don't want plaster in my studio. It could be a problem. This is not plaster. This was made from clay and bisque fired. So this is a bisque mold. I just made it from scrap clay. So it is not plaster at all. It's just clay, which is great. You save your scraps and you make things from those. You make your molds from those. And you can use it from this way as a, um, you can use it as a slump mold or you can use it as a drape mold, your choice. But that's my wok bowl mold. And we have a member, Christina Warren. I don't know if she's on. <laughs> when the class first came out, she went on a, mu a multi-city, maybe multi-state shopping spree buying every size wok out there so she could make that, that, make those wok molds. I don't know if she's on. Usually when, she, when we show that mold, she comes on and um, we talk about all her walks that she has. Um, other, other great ones that I have, this was also sent to me from our member in Singapore, from Sandia. Oh, let me show you. I'm gonna use this one tonight. We're gonna use this. It, it reminds me of peacock feathers. But they're very inexpensive. They're only a couple dollars a, a piece, if that. If you get them on sale, they're even less. Um, leaves like this, fall, if anybody's got autumn leaves left, these should be on sale. This is a beautiful one I've made 
pieces with um, things like this. And then here's another fall one I got that's a place, well, I actually think it's a table runner maybe. And it, it makes great texture. It's actually this right here. We'll go over to the, so here's the texture. Here is the plate it made. So you get to see right there in real life. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, wait, I was showing you that heart one. I've got some finished pieces with the heart ones. So just because it's a heart shape, maybe you don't want heart shaped plates, although you could make a heart shaped plate. This is actually roses, and I used it to create this piece right here. We'll go back over. So the hearts make this scallop platter. I used the cutter from Dela Designs. She has this beautiful oval cutter. And then I used the GR Pottery form and this for my texture. I like to show the finished things if I have them uh, before we make, just so you know what's coming. And then I don't know if I grabbed this one. This was a felt as well. So this was felt and this one was done with a felt heart placemat that I have, these two. And I went for a lot of pink because it was, it was Valentine's. I was going for pinks. Again, this is Georgie's rose gold. Is that glaze? Really lovely one. Kathleen has that long leaf placemat. It's great, isn't it? We probably all have very similar ones because, you know, it's what's out in the world right now. Uh, other things for texture are lace. So I didn't, I didn't want to do lace tonight. We, I love lace and I use la lace a lot, uh, but I decided we'll save lace. And quickly back to heart plates. Uh, I think next week we're going to make heart plates together, but if you're not making heart plates yet and you want to make them for Valentine's, Get on it, folks. It's time. That time is now. Make those heart plates. I'm going to sit that out of the way. And I've got some clay, and we're, gonna, we're just going to have a good time. The Orange Runner. Uh, Michael's, I think I got this at Michael's a couple years ago, is where this one came from. The great thing about these really long ones is I'm actually probably never going to make a piece as long as this, although that could be a cool wall tile, right? Um, but you could cut it up and share it with a friend. Cut it, I mean, honestly, you could probably cut it in thirds and have three really good sized mats. What else? I'm killing my lath. I'm smacking my mic. I'm sorry, everybody. Smack, smack the mic. I mean, hey, it's an occupational hazard in the pottery studio. <laughs> my production guy's losing his mind. Sa sound engineer. <laughs> it's all right. I promise it'll be okay. <laughs> Shine has a lot of placemats. Yes. Yeah. So you never could find an old wok. I bought mine brand new from our store in Albany. It's the Asian supermarket. That's the name of the store. And it was brand new, but it was like $22 for a big wok. And I thought it was worth the investment to make molds from it. And I've made two or three molds from it. And it's been like six years since I made, I bought that wok and I've been using that mold. It's worth it. It was worth it for me. All right, let's use, I got a lot of clay here tonight. So we're just gonna grab a piece and I'm gonna work with again. This is that lovely speckled light brown clay. And I rolled this clay out a little while ago, about two hours ago, and it's been wrapped up in plastic since then. So it's good to go. The darker clays with grog sometimes I find are very wet, and I like to roll them out a little while before I plan to use them. You know, at least 20, 30 minutes to give them some resting time so some of that moisture can start to work its way out because they do get a little super super flexible and we don't really want that. So you have a plastic four drawer tool organizer from Office Supply and the placemat lays flat. I have one, I, it's three drawer, it's white. It's a stair light organizer. I don't know if I can actually show that it's way across the room. Maybe I can see if I can get a studio helper to <laughs> move it, to stop their job and move everything. All right, so this clay, since I rolled, you don't have to, no. It's just, <laughs> we're not going to do that tonight. Um, this is a, the clay I rolled out earlier. It's about 
three eighths of an inch thick. I'm thinning it down just a bit because it's a little thicker than I really need. So we'll just smooth it out, get rid of any texture that was on there from the canvas that I used. And it's a, it's a bit thicker than I need, so we're just going to take it down a bit. Now, if you're going to use clay to make a plate, you need to know what size plate you want to make. And it's a good idea to have your clay to be big enough for said plate. So I'm going to make something square. And you can just free cut. Or if you want to, you could use a GR pottery form, if you have any of those, as a template. So you could go ahead and cut that way. But I'm just going to take my knife. And I'm just going to go ahead and if you don't have a knife, you can use a needle tool, whatever works for you. And I'm just going to square this off a bit, just a bit. So we're square-ish right now. And then I have this amazing thing. Now my initial inclination with this would be to put it right in the middle, right? You put it right there. Now, that's boring. I mean, sometimes you do that. but. I, I find it more interesting when we have edges. So this edge would be really nice. So we can play with edge. And I'm going to actually grab Instagram folks and pull you down. There you go. Now you can see better. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to lay this on. And I'm going to take a rolling pin. And I'm just going to roll it in. Now, if you wanted to use multiples, you know, different edges, different designs in one piece. You certainly could do that. You could just lay them up against it. See, so you could have like this scalloped edge. And then if you wanted to have the leaf one, let me see, you could have the leaf one coming in. I mean, it could get a little messy. So maybe stick with one. But let's see. Let's see how this did. Now I'm using a big rolling pin, but you could use a pony roller if you wanted to. This is the best. This is the best part right here. Look at that. So you could do a asymmetrical plate where you only have texture on one section, right? And you leave the rest smooth and beautiful. <laughs> Let's do this side here. So I think we'll do something like this. And then we'll roll this in. So the heart-shaped plates I made just by cutting around GR Pottery Forms, heart-shaped forms, so those who are interested. I also use the cardboard heart candy boxes. You know, I save those. There is, we have a heart plate tutorial up on ClayShare that I did a few years ago. If you want to get a jump start on heart plates, you can check that tutorial out. So now we have some really nice texture happening on both sides, right? lift this up and we can decide do we want to free cut it or do we want to use something as a template you could do a circle you could do a square Let's see what I got under here Ooh, all right those who are asking about heart rim templates here's a heart wooden plaque I bought at a craft store so you can always pick these up for a few dollars all right I've got a bunch of them actually now, now that we're talking about heart stuff, yep, here we go. So here's one. I got this from Michael's. Here's another one. And, you know, I just have these stacked up. Now, GR Pottery Forms also. Let me grab them. I wasn't going to do GR Pottery's hearts tonight. I was thinking of waiting till next week. So, you know, we've got some time. But these are from GR Pottery Forms. So I got three. And we could use it as a template or you can, and as the plate form. So there's options. And I think he has them as a set of three, but they don't stack. So you're not going to get like a deep dish. You love using the heart candy boxes. Yes. And they come in many, many sizes. Uh, I, when my, my children get their heart candy boxes, I take them all. Once they've eaten their chocolates, I take the boxes and use them. Now you can use rim templates, any of the ones we have on ClayShare. But I think for this, we're going to 
go old school, really simple. And I'm just going to take a straight edge and I'm going to cut it. And if you like things to be exact, then maybe you want definitely to use a rim template. But if you like to go with the flow, this could be kind of a new thing for you, right? So we cut one side, We've got to make a square. We'll cut our other side. Could make a rectangle if you don't want a square. There's no rules, right? Where we want our plate to stop, right here? What do you think, right there? Think here. So it's a bit of a rectangle. Uh, no, I think we're good. Now you want to round your edges. You can go ahead and you can take a little bit off the edge or we can soften them when we make the piece on the form. And then all these strips that I just cut, we're going to use to make our feet with. All right, let me set this off to the side. But look, do you see what we're getting? We're getting this really nice asymmetrical pattern. I am using my Christmas present. <laughs> this is what I got. I have the little one, uh, but this one was the one I got for Christmas. And it's really great because look, my wok bowl mold, my wok mold fits right on it. And then I can spin it. It doesn't hit anything. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so let's grab our little square of clay and we're just gonna drape it on here. And we're just gonna eyeball it and you might have to scooch around a little bit to get it where you need it to be. Yeah, I think I went that way a little too much. There. So you get it on, and then I want to use, oh, yes, put a placemat under to do double-sided texture. We did that when we made our wallflowers last year. Um, yeah. That, that's a great way to use placemats. We're going to do one in just a minute. You get, you got ahead of me. <laughs> All right, so I'm just using a mud tool rib, a red one, to smooth this down gently. You know, just... And this is where you can decide you really want to have, you want your edges to be a sharper corner, or do you want to round them a little bit? Because you can use your finger just gently and round the edges. Now, GR Pottery Forms has a spherical square form, which can make a nice template as well. So you can use that. Let me clean that up. I'm going to put a foot on this. Um, yeah, I think we'll put a foot on it. So I'm just going to use my finger as I spin this to kind of mark out where I want to do a circle, a circle in a square. So that's where I'm going to put my foot. And then I have over here all those beautiful strips that we cut off and we're going to use our foot maker. So these are all things I just have in the studio. They're not, you know, all the tools I'm using are just stuff that I, I have. You know, as you go forward in pottery making, you will have a collection of tools, whether they're texture tools or just your working tools that, that you use that become kind of your standards, which it's nice to have that. Of course, it's really nice to challenge yourself and try new things as well every once in a while, right? Because we learn from challenge. It helps us grow. So there's half of our foot, but that's not enough. We need another. We need another strip. Here we go. We use this one. Uh, foot maker is just a corn cob holder modified that... Uh, I use to cut my feet. And you can make these in all different sizes. So if you want to make bigger, wider feet, you just modify your foot makers. I mean, corn on the cob holders are really inexpensive to buy. And they come in usually packs of six to eight. So you can make a lot of them. You can have them for all different sizes. Daylight Designs has a heart-shaped cutter. Yes, thank you. I. There's so many heart products, and Sambao has their new heart decals out, which I will be demoing uh, as soon as they get here. 
That might be next week if they come in time. I'm hoping they do. So I slipped and scored what will be my foot ring. And then we just line up. little feet and then we want to cut down through see they overlap a little bit so we'll cut through both just like that you like the double side texture well we'll do it in a second um, so double sided texture you can do with placemats on both sides. You can do with placemat under with a rolling pin on the top. And that's what I often do because you might have tried rolling texture with a rolling pin on one side and then flipping your clay over and try to roll on the other side to get texture. It works, but not well. And what ends up happening is the side you first rolled on, it becomes much shallower and it's almost like a shadow texture. It's just not really well impressed. So if you put your slab of clay on a placemat and then use your rolling pin to roll, well now you get the best of both worlds. You get placemat texture and rolling pin texture on one piece. Watch out. All right, so I'm just smoothing my foot ring out, sealing up this inside edge right here, cleaning that up. And then I like to go back and shape it so I have a nice semi-round. I mean, this is on a square plate, so it doesn't have to be perfectly round. Could have made it square, right? So let's let this set, and then we can flip it over once it has set up so it's not floppy. If I turn this over right now, what's going to happen is the sides are just, it's just going to collapse. It's way too wet. So this will sit just like it is for a couple hours. N not too, too long. Not, not all day. Two hours should be enough in my studio. And then I can flip it over, and I end up with a shape similar to this right here. Different pattern, though, right? Because we use that beautiful placemat. My rib I bought from, um, I think I got it at Ensika from Mud Tools, but it's a Cheryl Mud Tools rib, and I love this one because it has the narrow end and a little wider end, but all of this is serrated, so if you had a big area to slip and score, you really could do a lot of slipping and scoring. It's the L12 serrated rib. All right, so now this has to sit off to the side because it has to dry. So we're just going to put it over here. And it's, it's gone. That's it. No more. Now let's grab another placemat. And maybe we'll grab two. Placemat texture and dark would look so pretty with, uh, cl oh, with Clayscape's cream and dark clay. Oh, you know it. And since I'm doing all kinds of bakeware right now, I've, I've just switched over to dark clay in the studio. I'm going to be switching back to light clay. Uh, maybe for next week I'll be back on light clay. But right now, what happens in the studio is I switch all the way over to one type of clay, and I'll use that for a period of time, and then I have to clean everything and switch back. So if I'm using dark clay, I don't want to be grabbing B-Mix and trying to use B-Mix or porcelain with the same tools that have the dark clay on it. Unless I want some interesting marbling, which it would work. And I think I showed this the other week, but this is how I store my slabs. I roll them out, I will set them on plastic and then wrap them up. And they, they keep for days to weeks this way. It, they, they keep for a long, long time. All right, I wanna take this off and put it on this little work board. So this was recycled clay from the studio. This was a bunch of scraps that I wedged up and rolled out with a rolling pin. I just took all the scraps from everything I'd been making 
and turned it into this slab. And so now we're going to go ahead and smooth it out. It's really thick, so we're going to roll it out a little more to thin it down. And if there's any air bubbles in it, we're going to go ahead and as we smooth it, they'll pop. And if we need to fill them, see there's a bit of clay building up. I see there's a little one there. We'll just take a little bit of that clay and we'll fill in that air bubble. Because air bubbles happen, but it's not a big deal. Still got canvas on this side, so we'll smooth this side out. So my favorite two clays for making bakeware are by Laguna, because that's the clay supplier nearest me. And I do recommend you all to use the clays you can get in your area. So find out where your local clay supplier is and see what clay they carry. But the two that I currently am using are Laguna 90 and Laguna 60. 90 is a reddish brown clay. It's sandy. It's got a bit of grog in it too. And then the 60 is that light brown speckle, so it has a nice speck to it. The 90 doesn't have a speck that you can really see. Another dark clay that I absolutely love, but it, I would have to get it shipped from the West Coast, is Georgie's Dark Chocolate Trail Mix Clay. Oh my gosh, that's such a good clay. But for me to get that, it's, I have to buy the clay and then pay to get it shipped. And it's just too far. It's the whole other coast. So those of you who are out west, check out Georgie's Clay because they have some beautiful dark clays. As we roll, you can see it stretches a little bit. Some more of the air bubbles come to the surface. We just compress them, and that forces the air out. Compresses it down. Sometimes you don't even have to fill them. All right, so this is the one we want to do placemat under placemat on top, right? So we're going to do a double texture. That sounds like fun. So if you're making a bowl, you can have texture on both sides. That'll be nice. You wish there was a Georgie's clay distributor out here. Uh, Jennifer, me too. I would love to be able to get their clays. I mean, you can buy them, but shipping one box of clay at a time from Oregon is just, it's too much. Once in a while, I'll, I, you know, you can treat yourself to a box of it, but you can't do full production. All right, well, let's see what we have for mats. We have so many that we can use. This one I have to use because I adore it. So we'll definitely use that. And then I really want to see how, another one, where did that one? This one, I want to see how this one looks. Isn't that beautiful with these leaves? So simple. So the question is, which one do we put on the bottom? I don't know if it matters. Put this one on first and just put it under. And then we are going to roll it first in a bit because I want to make sure that impression goes through. And then we'll do this one right on top. This one is so far my favorite. Love it. So Laguna 60 is very similar to standard 112. Good to know. And you wonder if the clay store in Wilmington, North Carolina has it. They carry a lot of, oh, Georgie's glazes. Maybe. All right, so let's peel the top. Actually, let's, I want to make sure I got it really on there. The great thing about the mats is if you start lifting it up and you see the edge isn't quite as deep as you want, as far as the impression goes, you can just stop, put it back down, and keep rolling. Okay, ready? I think we got it this time. 
Oh, Nancy just got some heart GR pottery forms that were seconds. Got them for half price. Whoa, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? So now we're going to flip the whole slab over because to get the back side to peel it, you got to put it on a board. So we're just going to lay it on this one. And then we'll just reach under and grab the board. And then we're going to peel it up. Everything's going to kind of stick, so I'm just gently pulling. And then now we can peel our texture. So look at that. Isn't that pretty? Some of the mat came off. So how do you pick which side you use? That's tough, right? <laughs> you got this beautiful leaf on this side. It's really nice. Or you have this on the back. There's the back. There's the front. Oh, uh, we have rounded. Are we gonna do round? I have an RD2 form over here. Let me use that. Let me grab it. I also have an oval. Ooh. <laughs> Let's do the RD2 form because it, it's a really beautiful form. So for this, we're just gonna set this on, just like that. And we're just gonna cut out the circle it made. So I'm just gonna take my knife, or you could use a needle tool and just cut out a circle. Now you can make your own forms too. I have drape mold classes in all kinds of shapes, but sometimes it's nice to be able to just use one that's out there. All right, I have a little board down here we're just gonna sit that on. Look at this perfect circle. It kind of looks great as a circle without like becoming anything else. So you found some nice Christmas mats for sale for next year. Ah, very cool. Uh, I think I want, I think I want this to be the inside. And then this pattern to be the backside. Oh, it's so nice though. All right, let's put this on. And so it's the same form I used to cut with. Right? And a lot of people were asking when Jeff came out with these if you have to use a pottery wheel because he uses a wheel to use these forms. You don't have to. You, use, you don't have to use a wheel. You don't even have to use a banding wheel, but I find it's a little easier. All right, let's flip. I don't even have a board under here. We're just going to lift this board. Look at that. Oh, my. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you see a pattern and you're like, oh, I, wish, I wish that that was one of my rolling pins, right? I wish I did a rolling pin that design. And I could, but I don't need to. That, it, this exists, and I think this pattern's probably out there enough in the world that everybody can find it, right? Okay, so we have a little conundrum. We have a piece that has a lot of texture on it, and it's fabulous. But normally we use a rib and we smooth down our piece. But if we do that now, what's going to happen? We're going to destroy our beautiful texture and we don't want to do that. So we are just going to take our hands and we're going to press this down onto the form and then kind of roll our hands out and down the side. You see, I'm not really flattening it too much, but I am pressing it firmly into the form. If you're using a drape mold that you made yourself, or commercially bought one or a form like this from GR Pottery. You see how easy it is to work with. Flowers inside and leaves outside, get your vote. And I did it the other way around. <laughs> but I, I have a flower one. So this cherry blossom you could do on the inside and then this beautiful leaf on the outside, right? So no two could be the same. You would have a ton of options. All right, and then I just wanna, this edge right here, I just wanna roll this around and using my finger, I'm just softening this edge so it's not gonna be sharp. You don't have to put a foot on this. This is actually flat right here. We could leave it and have no foot at all, which is what I think I'm going to do. 
but it does have to sit uh, to stiffen up because just like the piece we put on the other mold is if we flip this over right now the clay is still too wet and it won't hold its shape. So we'll uh, wait for it. Tomorrow I'll flip it out and I'll share the video. Alright, so you guys will see it. We have time to do one more? I think we have time to do one more. Yeah, I do. I do. I got time to do one more. I've got, I don't have much clay left. I've used all my clay. It's sad. No, no, it's fine. It'll be all right. Uh, <laughs> I have more. I got a couple tons of clay actually in the studio right now. There's, um, honestly, I don't like having this much clay at the beginning of winter because sometimes the studio freezes and then my clay freezes and that is no fun at all for me because I have to wedge and pug it all. But um, sometimes you get crazy when you go pick up clay and I buy too much. That's what's happened. <laughs> The last, last few times I've gone to Vermont Ceramic Supply, they, the buying has been a little crazy. I'm trying a bunch of different new clays is what it is. All right, so here's a little strip. I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do something. Actually, I do know what I'm going to do. So this is for all of my um, potters who like things to be simple. Don't want to add a whole bunch of extra things to it like tools and, and stuff. This is just what you got. So we rolled out our little strip, thinned it down a bit. We'll do the double, we'll do the double, but maybe we'll do a rolling no, we're only using placemats. Nope, nope. We're going to only use placemats. We're going to do the Sakura on the outside. And I have this pretty wavy rose. It won't matter on the inside because it's going to be a three-dimensional form. But I don't care. I'm still going to put texture on it. Nobody's here to stop me. They wouldn't be able to stop me anyways. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. We're going to make a vase quickly. Simple cylinder vase, right? Really simple. Cherry blossoms. Very nice. Flip it over. And this is a rose, but Look at how cool it can be when you just let it do its thing. All right, so let's get the clay evened up. So we're making an even bottom, even top, I don't know, maybe four inches tall is about what we're at here. I'm not even using a template. It's crazy. This is a little uneven, so I'm going to just do a tiny cut to even this out. This is when you don't want any rules at all. Like, that's it. I'm doing what I want. Nobody's going to stop me. Make a angled cut there, make an angled cut over here. Let me tell you how long it is. I'm going to have to tell you because someone's going to want to know. <laughs> I'm saying it's 11 inches by three. Oh, it's basically four inches. It's like a hair shy of four inches. All right. That's good. That works. This is going to be the top, so I'm just going to smooth that edge. Slip and score. So one interesting thing about clay is when you are smoothing it out with a rib and when you start adding texture to it, 
it softens the clay back up. So if your clay has stiffened up a little bit and you're working with it and you feel like it's going to be too stiff to make anything from, start putting texture into it because I tell you, that will soften it up really quickly. And we do have texture on the inside. And would I normally put texture on the inside of a pot? Hmm, well, not normally, but what is normal, right? And this is a bit thin. You can see this one is thinner than I usually make. I usually like to keep it about a quarter of an inch thick. This one's a tiny bit thinner. Not too much, though. Closer to an eighth. Let's go ahead and make our feet. So this ended up being one of our mini succulent planters that uh, you can go make on ClayShare. Smooth our feet out. So this is when I don't want to make bottoms separately and attach them. You just fold in your bottom. Look what you can do, right? Sometimes you need a little ball of clay here. Sometimes that area tries to open back up or you get a little, little gap, so I just roll a little button clay, flatten it out a little bit, slip and score it, and just press it down in. And then it gives me a place also to stamp it. So we'll put that in there stamp it with my initials, turn it over. It's super soft, could stiffen up a little bit more. Um, let me get... Here. I'll put it on the big banding wheel. Come here, little baby. Looks like it's got legs. It's going to go dancing. The dancing planter. We'll square it. Little square planter. Here we go. So you have texture on the inside, which is kind of fun, right? And texture on the outside. And if you don't want it square, you round it back out. Up to you. You got a poinsettia at the Dollar Tree. Oh, poinsettia placemat. Very nice. Yeah. So this, this could be a really fun little planter. Once it's stiffened up, I can put holes in the bottom for drainage. Can't really do that now <laughs> because it'll collapse on me. And you can also put a little bead of clay down inside too. That'll help fill in the hole on the outside. So right in there, it's just a little bead. That's it. So there we have it. Cute little planter. Um, that was just a quickie, but I do have that as a full length class. So if you want to know how to make these cute little mini succulent planters, I think is what I call them. We also do them as tri uh, tripod planters as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I did four legs. You could do three. Don't let anybody tell you four legs is less stable than three. They can be all stable. Doesn't matter. I really like it squared. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to keep it squared or not. The other pieces, we're going to have to wait till tomorrow for them to get flipped off their forms. It's, they're too wet, but I will share that. But look how fun it is, right? This, this is, I'll share this one because this one is done. So you see what one can look like, and it gives you an idea. There, we'll put, put Instagram back up. Okay. All right, there we have it. So next in prime time, we're going to go ahead and talk about laser printers for making your own decals. So if you have images or pictures, um, you know, if you've got a picture of your kitty and you want to put it on a piece of pottery, you can. If you have a wedding announcement or something you want to do, you want to put the words on there, you can. If you have a beautiful illustration and you want to jazz up some pottery with your own drawings, you can do that too. So we're going to talk about that next 
specifically about the printers and any other questions folks have about making their own decals, I do have a full length class and I have a little tutorial on making laser decals, but we'll talk specifically about printers because it's super important. If you do not have the right printer, you're not going to be able to make the laser decals. Same with paper. So we'll talk about the right paper because you need that too. I hope you guys had fun playing around with some texture, just a little fun, you know, a little bit of a uh, getting back in the studio after the holidays and breaking in some new textures for the new year. All right, everyone, take care, be well, and make great pots. Bye, everybody.